Godwin, the golden child of Marika and Godfrey, the uniter who ended the Dragon War, the target of the Black Knives, and the first of the demigods to fall. Godwin, the monstrous abomination, the prince of death, and the cause of those that live in death. Godwin, what the hell happened to Godwin? Hello and welcome back to a new lore video. My name is once again Hollow, or well, actually it's Aaron, but I'm back for my fifth official lore video for Rage Gaming. Today, as you might have guessed, we're speaking about Godwin, the Prince of Death and his connection to the world of dreams, a theme which has come up a bit more and more as I explore the story of Elden Ring. In this video, we'll be speaking of death and its spread in the lands between, the cause of that, and why Godwin is found in not one or two, but actually a lot of places. What is he doing? How is he spreading his image in this this way? Is he even aware he's doing it? Today we try to answer these questions. As always though, I want to thank you for your support on these lore videos. They do take a lot of work to make as you might imagine, but it's well worth it when this series results in a lot of cool discussion and even ends up furthering my own theories and understanding of the story. As I like to mention in these videos though, I never want you to take these theories as fact. Everything yeah comes from item descriptions, in-game details or anything reliable in-game to draw from, but we are using those to speculate, to connect the dots and form a conclusion if possible, which is not concrete, but that's part of the fun of it. With that said though, let's begin. Godwin, before his death on the Night of the Black Knives, was actually quite a friendly fellow it would seem. As the son of Marek and Godfrey, he was in an impressive position in life, and used that power to the great benefit of the lands between. You see, long ago, Lindell was attacked by the ancient dragons, which then sparked the war against the dragons. This was apparently the only times the walls of Lindell have ever fallen, and to this day, you can still see that giant body of Gransax and his spear buried into the city. Long ago, Godwin the Golden defeated the ancient dragon Fortisex, and then befriended his fallen foe, an event that gave rise to the ancient dragon cult in the capital. Godwin was so powerful, he was able to defeat one of the most powerful dragons at the time, and then, instead of finishing off his foe, he let him live, and became friends with Fortisex, and in doing so, created that ancient dragon cult, a cult that was ultimately a back and forth between the humans and the dragons. It led to the lines of communication and cooperation with the dragons, compared to, say, continuing a bloody war. The dragons were even able to transform themselves to communicate with humans at a direct level. Lanciax was the sister of Fortisax. It is said that she took the form of a human to commune with the knights as a priestess of the ancient dragon cult. Lanciax was also tied to Vike, a powerful warrior who is one of the most likely contenders for Elden Lord, and was loved by the dragons much like Godwin was. So yes, in life, Godwin was well loved and a key figure in the history of Lindell and the Golden Order. He was a golden boy, as it were, who improved the lives of many, ending a horrible war. But it seems these actions and his popularity cost him his life. The golden boy must have been the perfect target for the needs of a certain plan, and Godwin's death resulted in Marika shattering the Elden Ring, in what at very least appeared to be a distraught reaction. That may have been a ruse, but that's not for this video. Godwin was the first demigod to fall though. On the Night of the Black Knives, he was the target of the assassins, who, through certain connections, had the power of destined death. Using that, they were able to kill Godwin, despite his status, thanks to their Black Knives, which were imbued with a very fragment of the Rune of Death. That rune carved up Godwin's body, but more importantly, it it pierced his very soul. It did what nothing else could, and it killed, it destroyed Godwin's soul. Somehow though, leaving his body to continue on. At the same time, another death involving the Rune of Death happened. Rani used another fragment on herself, but with careful control, she destroyed just her body, leaving her soul very much alive, transferring it to another container. But Godwin, for him, things were not so easy. He became a monstrous thing indeed. And we can learn more about what happened to his body from various items found in game. From the Prince of Death's Pustule, a fetid pustule taken from facial flesh. It is said that this pustule came from the visage of the Prince of Death. He who used to be called Godwin. As first dead of the demigods, it's said he is buried deep under the capital at the Erd Tree's roots. And from the Prince of Death's cyst, it is another fetid, overgrown cyst taken from facial flesh. And it is said that this cyst came from the corrupted visage of one unable to die a true death. Indeed, it comes from the Prince of Death scion of the golden bow and first of the dead among the demigods. So what we have here are two talismans that are created from the facial flesh of Godwin, the prince of death. Buried within the Erd Tree's roots, Godwin was unable to die a true death despite the fact that the Black Knives killed him with those weapons. 
his soul seemingly destroyed, without a remembrance to return to the Earth Tree, he was instead physically buried within the Earth Tree's roots, much like the old ways. But something else happened when Godwin and Rani were killed. A new rune was created. In two halves, we have a curse mark carved into the discarded flesh of Rani the Witch. We find this on Rani's true body at the top of Leonia Tower. This curse mark was carved at the moment of death of the first demigod and should have taken the shape of a circle, but two demigods perished at the same time, which broke the curse mark into two half wheels instead. Now, Rani was the first of the demigods whose flesh perished, while the Prince of Death perished in soul alone. So the Mending Rune of Death here would have been created through this event with Godwin, which could be used to restore death to the lands between. With the Rune of Death, that lore of reality missing from the Elden Ring, people can come back from death as we know. However, using Destined Death, you can permanently kill someone or choose to do something else. Rani was able to destroy her body only intentionally and then put her soul in another container. Godwin was murdered against his will and they seemed to target his soul, meaning his body survived. With these two demigods dying in this way at the same time, the Mending Rune of Death could not be fully formed in one place. So it was broken into two places, which we can actually collect and then restore in game. That would form the Mending Rune of the Death Prince. And at the end of the game, we can use that to mend the Shattered Elden Ring, leading to one of the unique endings of the game, the Age of the Dustborn. Godwin's soul death led to what seems to be a brainless state for him. Essentially a vegetable, Godwin's body needed some kind of solution, something had to be done with it, and so the burial within the roots of the Earth Tree seemed to be their choice. From the Golden Epitaph, a weapon, it is a sword made to commemorate the death of Godwin the Golden, first of the demigods to die. Infused with the humble prayer of a young boy, O oh brother, Lord brother, please die a true death. That young boy who names Godwin brother is, I think, likely Mikula, as they are both children of Marika, right? And that would make them at very least half brothers. It is clearly their hope, whoever it actually was in any case, that this burial uh, with that, Godwin could be put to true rest and die a true death. But that was not the case. As we delve into the depths under the Erd Tree itself, we find, buried within those roots, the now huge and disfigured body of Godwin. He certainly has grown, and into something otherworldly. This strange, fishy body is confirmed to be Godwin, the now Prince of Death. Fia has a plan to lay with him and restore the Rune of Death to the Elden Ring. This is a familiar face though, similar to the one that we see when we pick up the Prince of Death's pustule under Stormvale Castle. It's much the same, but it actually is different. That one under Stormvale Castle has no eyes, but still super similar. Why is Godwin in two places at once? The face coming out from the floor of Stormvale is likely just a growth. It is confirmed that the real body, by all sources, is the one we see buried within the roots of the Earth Tree, down in the deep root depths. That body has its huge torso, the fishy tail, and even the seaweed-like golden locks of Godwin is still there. Oh, and it also has eyes, which are missing from that second Godwin face under Stormvale. The thing is, though, there's more to the Godwin here that you might first see. On the left from the body, we see these huge eyes growing out of the roots. Those eyes we can see actually in various places around the lands between. And what we know is Deathroot will show us more. Deathroot is a source that gives rise to those who live in death. On the night of the dire plot, the stolen Rune of Death enabled the first death of a demigod. And later, the Rune of Death spread across the lands between through the underground roots of the Great Tree, sprouting in the form of Deathroot. It sounds like Deathroot is the cause, aka gives rise to the undead creatures of Elden Ring. Deathroot is the physical spread of the Rune of Death via the roots of the Earth Tree, meaning Godwin's body tangled up in those roots is resulting in the spread of Deathroot. Godwin's body pierced by the Rune of Death is spreading a twisted version of that power. So wherever it sprouts, we see the skeleton forms of those once dead rising again. Fascinating then, isn't it, that we see these types in the Faramazula area for the uh, undead or skeletal beastmen. They're being raised by Deathroot, despite how it's up in the sky. How is Godwin's Deathroot reaching there? That's a big question I don't have an answer to, so if you have any theories, let me know. But even more interesting is the physical indication of Godwin within the Deathroot. If you look at the actual icon, in the middle of that, there might even be a little eye poking out. When we look at physical Deathroot in those areas where we see the skeletons and so on, we can see the literal eye 
in the physical death route. I'd like to credit and thank Zully the Witch for that discovery. While I was considering this very topic and doing the research, Zully released a video about those growths around the land. And I don't think I would have seen that if not for that video. Zully creates wonderful content for the From Software games, and I really strongly recommend the videos in general. But either way, let's continue. The physical representation of Godwin is spreading around the world, pushing itself to the surface through the roots of the earth tree, the core of the land. You have the death root with those eyes inside of them, but there's more ways, like the crabs that live directly above the deep root depths. This is something I've talked about in a video recently about unsolved mysteries. Today, we're kind of continuing that mystery with this video, which is pretty cool. And the thing is, crabs are found all over the world, eating whatever lies in their environment. And that sees us with crabs with magical powers based on the location, what they're eating. And it's the same with those above the deep root depths. They're able to attack and spread death, using it to kill you. Quite the power for a crab to have. More concerning though is the fact that on their backs we have those pustules and cysts which even resemble Godwin's face. His image is quite literally growing from their backs. From the crabs to the death root and the huge familiar face under Stormvale, it would seem, maybe without knowing, that Godwin is spreading his image around the lands. In doing so, he is also spreading the rune of death in some form, reviving those dead in skeletal form, corrupting those that live, and even killing those afflicted by it. Quite unsettling when you think of it and are aware of it. But now we should consider the deathbed dream, a place we literally go to and face a very powerful and important familiar name, Fortis Axe now known as the Lich Dragon. By continuing that storyline of fears, we are able to interact with her while she sleeps and enter the deathbed dream. This dream realm is something with huge implications. Mikola has heavy ties to it, and I made a full lore video recently about Saint Trina and the dream world. Even cut content involved with that, and that might be used in DLC. In any case, by entering the deathbed dream of fear, we enter a different realm of sorts, where the sky is nightmarish and strange. And within that dream, we encounter Fortisax, now the Lich Dragon, and after a, an awesome fight with him, we can learn more from his remembrance. After Godwin the Golden became the Prince of Death, the ancient dragon fought long and hard against death within his companion. Alas, victory was never achieved, and its only reward was corruption. So, somehow Fortisax was able to enter the deathbed dream, to go where Godwin might truly be to battle the death within his old friend, but sadly he wasn't able to win and then was eventually corrupted. That death that was forced into Godwin's body via those black knives, corrupting and twisting his body into what we see now, spread its influence through the Erd Tree's roots. And this was something that Fortisax saw happening and saw the source of. So those that buried Godwin in that ceremonial way probably had no idea what a terrible mistake that was. But Fortisax somehow could see it and thought he could stop it alone. As a lightning slash holy dragon, maybe he had a chance to cleanse Godwin's corrupted body, but clearly he failed. That same corruption eventually took him over and that's a bit of a sad and bitter ending. It is exciting though to, to learn of the deathbed dream. It's a big question that is Godwin even aware of what's happening to him or the world? As he seemingly spreads his own visage around it and the result is that death, does he know? Is he mentally even there or is he elsewhere. Now after the topic of Saint Trina and Mikola's dream world, the deathbed dream could be connected. If as I wondered in that other lore video, are all the dream worlds connected? Perhaps Mikola and Godwin are in the same place mentally, the half brothers reunited again. Or maybe not. The deathbed dream is a rather specific name. It could also be that dream worlds are just separate from one another. Mikola is in a totally different one. I learned from that investigation of Saint Trina that there was a follower of Saint Trina that found the dream world Mikola inhabits and there is no mention of the deathbed dream in any of that. So in any case, I am a firm believer now that Elden Ring does have a dream world, maybe multiple, pocket dimensions where people can go to mentally exist while their body, the real one, just rests. Could it be that Godwin and his mental state resides somewhere in the deathbed dream? Could we go there in maybe DLC? Or is he truly just a vegetable? No thoughts, head empty, and his body is just spreading that rune of death. But yeah, I like to imagine that these could be a great source for content in DLC in the future. A way to go to an entirely new place without messing with the current map as we know it. An unlimited space of potential where the rules could be totally different and the devs could do some truly incredible things with dream worlds. And you know what? They already have. With say Bloodborne's DLC, 
see the old hunters, that's a great example. And even the main hub of that game, the hunter's dream, that works as a, a tiny pocket dimension that the hunter, the player, is bound to. But for now, there you have it. That ends my research into Godwin, the Prince of Death, his current state and his influence on the world as we know it. And importantly, the concept of dream worlds and their potential for DLC. Let me know what you think. Reading the theories in the comments of these videos is definitely one of the best part of making these videos. I have my perception on this information, but you could have something else that might be better. And a big thank you again for the support on these videos. They do take a lot of work, but I'm trying to make them regularly. So if you'd like to keep seeing them, please do drop a like on this video so I can. For now, though, thank you very much for watching. I've been Hollow, you've been you, and I'll see you next time. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos. Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes. Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment. Yes, I said entertainment twice. To reiterate that it is nice. To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis when you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage. Is. Uh, goodbye.